In two days, the country will mark 20 years since the September 11th terrorist attacks. And in the days after 9-11, the terrorist ties to the Bay Area immediately began to surface. I-Team investigator Adam Walser revisits those connections and explores some of the questions still unanswered 20 years later. Two decades ago, strangers arrived in sunny Sarasota County. A lot happened here. A lot. Quietly blending in while preparing to carry out the worst ever terrorist attack on American soil. Record show 12 of the 19 September 11th hijackers lived in or passed through Florida. Some bought cars. Others obtained Florida driver's licenses. They were here going to the same place that I'm going to. In May of 2000, ringleader Mohammed Atta received a tourist visa from the U.S. Embassy in Germany. A month later, witnesses say he turned up in South Florida looking at crop duster planes. He just had to run him away from the airplane because he kept trying to get up on the wing, get in, want to get in the cockpit. USDA loan officer John L. Bryant says Atta inquired about a loan to buy a plane. He said he was an engineer and he wanted to build a chemical tank that would fit inside the aircraft and take up every available square inch of the aircraft except for where the pilot would be sitting. Bryant said Atta dropped a name she didn't recognize at the time. Osama bin Laden. He mentioned that um, this man would someday be known as the world's greatest leader. It's something that will probably be with me for my life. In July of 2000, Atta and Marwan al Shihi showed up at Huffman Aviation in Venice, seeking flying lessons in exchange for $20,000 in cash Atta carried in a briefcase. Is this the plane they actually trained in? Yes, sir. This is the very plane right here. Well, they train in a few planes. Atta and al Shihi enrolled in an expedited flight program, flying nearly every day, according to Huffman Aviation owner Rudy Deckers. There was nothing that we could have seen that they were terrorists. I wish because then I would have stopped it. As long as they keep their yard good. They moved into a rented room in a house across the street from Kim Matsulboba's home. What were those guys like who were living there at the time? And they were not super friendly to me at all. I'd say, hi, neighbor. They would never smile or wave back. It was like a shadow you couldn't see. That home owned by another Huffman Aviation employee. When they first arrived, uh, they had no place to stay, they just popped in pretty much, uh, as I recall, unannounced. After the attack, FBI agents searched the home, but the home's owners said they were clueless when it came to their plot. She asked if we could put flags in her, in her yard because she wanted the, the neighborhood to know that she loved America. It wasn't her fault. There were clues of impending trouble not recognized at the time. If you're coming at me, charge in. Hijackers bucked up and trained in fighting techniques at local gyms. We could die any day, that's why we pray for such purposes. Five times a day, heads in concrete surfaces. It's murderous, have assassins, you heard of us. Ada and other hijackers recorded a rap song at a Sarasota recording studio, calling themselves the Arab Assassins. Some heartless, an animal next on God's list. Glocks and clips that blend with the fog and the mist. It's causing my this reputation with hindsight is almost always 2020. Two decades after 9-11, a former terrorist house is no longer an eyesore. The curse has been lifted off that house because now you see families that go in there. Rudy Deckers, the former owner of Huffman Aviation, went bankrupt. I live the American dream and Six months after, I was nothing anymore. He wrote a book in 2011 that didn't sell many copies. The next year, he was convicted of distributing cocaine and heroin, served time in federal prison, and according to his ex-wife, moved out of the country. I'm I-Team investigator Adam Walser, taking action for you. And Adam's I-Team investigation continues tonight at 11. He will look into why 80,000 pages of documents related to an investigation into who provided support to the hijackers remains classified two decades later.